Lumantria dispar, otherwise known as the gypsy moth, is an invasive species of lepidopteran found in northeastern United States. Originally, it traveled from Europe and Asia, where it existed for thousands of years. The moth's range in the United States as an invasive species extends from as far as southern Canada to as far as Virginia. The westward spread of the moth extends from the Atlantic coast across Pennsylvania, northern Ohio, and most of Michigan. It is estimated that the moth is spreading at a rate of 20 kilometers per year. The moth was brought into the USA in 1868 or 1869 as an attempt to start a silkworm industry. However, the cocoon threads of the gypsy moth are not a reliable source of silk. The gypsy moth was accidentally drew introduced into Boston, Massachusetts by E. Leopold Trouvelé. After 10 years, outbreaks of the moth began in Trouvelé's neighborhood. Since then, the moth has expanded throughout much of New England. Populations of gypsy moths follow regular yearly patterns in which outbreaks usually last one to five years and then subside due to disease buildup, starvation, and the impact of natural predation. Populations then remain low from four to twelve years until resurging. Gypsy moth larvae feed voraciously on the leaves of deciduous hardwood tree species. Because the gypsy moth is not native to the United States, its predators, parasitoids, and diseases that would feed on the egg masses in its native habitat are not found in the U.S. Although the gypsy moth has been in the United States for nearly 135 years and has spread throughout the Northeast, the spread has been relatively slow. This could be due to the fact that females cannot fly, so it may take longer for the species to reach surrounding areas and flourish. This does not exempt the gypsy moth from being a successful colonizer of the Northeast. The success is partially due to the fact that female gypsy moth egg masses may contain over a thousand eggs and the caterpillars that hatch from those eggs are capable of feeding on over 300 species of trees and shrubs. Host plants include, but are not limited to, oak, basswood, willow, birch, hemlock, pine, chestnut, sweet gum, and poplars. The generalistic feeding behavior allows the caterpillar to persist in a variety of areas. After hatching, the larvae climb toward light, where they spin thin support threads of silk. They hang from these support lines off of branches or leaves until a strong enough wind comes along to carry them off in a, dis in a dispersal flight. The larvae are very lightweight and covered with hairs that facilitate their floating and gliding in the breezes. The windborne transport is a very effective dispersal mechanism and can spread the larvae over great distances. The larvae that land on suitable trees will begin to voraciously feed on the leaves. In this early larval stage, the feeding is continuous, day and night. The larvae grow very rapidly and will molt four or five times. According to the USDA Forest Service, state and private forestry, the spread of the gypsy moth is happening at a faster rate than in the past and could infest much of the south and midwest during the next 30 years. Therefore, it is crucial that this species continues to be monitored and controlled in these areas. Millions of federal and state tax dollars have been spent on gypsy moth control. The approaches that have been taken to control gypsy moths in the United States include suppression, eradication, and slowing the spread. Suppression and eradication efforts include the use of chemical pesticides such as dimelin. Biological pesticides introduced to gypsy moth infested areas over the last 100 years such as a fungus that caterpillars will come in contact with when they are crawling on the ground. Also pheromone traps to trap males. One effort attempting to slow the spread of the gypsy moth is the Plant Protection Quarantine Program, which is a federal-state partnership that regulates the control of the artificial transport of gypsy moth to areas that are not already infested. This program makes it mandatory for anyone who is moving from a regulated area to thoroughly inspect any outdoor items they will be transporting. However, this is rarely enforced. I would build a great net, and nobody builds nets better than me, believe me, and I'll build them very inexpensively.